Hey everyone, I'm Zach from Workshop Edits and welcome to my shop. And welcome back to the three-part series of building the suspended crane system for my camera setup in the shop. In episode two, we focused on building the actual dolly that's gonna mount to that I-beam system and allow us to move that camera all along that eight-foot track. In the final episode of this series today, we're gonna focus on building the actual arm system that's gonna to mount to the dolly that we built in the previous episode that's gonna be able to swivel and spin and articulate in a bunch of different ways and basically allow us to move the camera around the shop wherever we want. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, I would highly recommend that you go do that so you can check out all of the previous projects that I worked on, including the previous parts of this particular build series. And then you can also be along for the journey as I complete the project and stick around for all the future projects so that you can see this particular thing in action for all future videos. All right, so for the final part of this build series, what I'm gonna do is take the material that I already broke down on the table saw in part one, head over to the miter saw and just start making the individual cuts for each component of that flexible arm. And I think by building each of the components of that arm system individually, it's gonna allow the whole thing to come together in the end versus trying to make all of my cuts at once and then just hoping that all of the measurements work out. So the way that this video is gonna be broken down is building each of those arms separately and then combining them at the end and then combining them with the final system so that it all comes together. Then we can finally test this thing out. Let's get started. So each piece has been broken down at the miter saw. I now have them arranged by component over at the outfeed table. And what I'm gonna do is just start working through the assembly process by component, starting with the top mount that's gonna to mount to the all thread in the dolly. I think the most important part of this build is the portion of the flexible arm that's gonna be mounted to the dolly. So the way I designed it is to have a top part that will be threaded into the all thread, as well as a bottom part that's also made up of four pieces, and then have those two pieces be connected. And by having a top and a bottom piece connected that is threaded through the same all thread, it's gonna help create a really rigid system up top so that when the weight of the camera is extended all the way out, it's not gonna wanna bow or flex. And if I find for whatever reason that it's not strong enough, I can always add more support. So the way I'm gonna assemble this is just by using glue and brad nails for each of the individual components. I can then head over to the drill press and drill out the inserts for the all thread and then go through that same routing process of routing out the recesses for the hex nuts so that the wood isn't damaged and that the all thread can be fed through. All right, so the holes are drilled, the hex nuts are recessed into those grooves that I routed out. The last thing I wanna do is just add rounded edges to the ends of each of the pieces over at the disc sander, just to give it a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal. So we're gonna do that, then we're gonna pull together this top piece for final assembly and get it test fitted. What I'm doing is just checking the gap here and the gap here. Cool, so while the part that mounts to the dolly cures, I'm going to work on the next part of the arm, which is going to be a particular piece that's about three feet long. I haven't fully decided exactly how long I want it to be, but we're gonna go ahead and route a groove in it. That way it can slide up and down to help adjust the overall height of the camera. So we're gonna head over to the router and use that half inch bit again to route out a groove in each of these pieces, and then we're gonna glue them up and combine them together, and I think it's gonna be really strong. All right, so the second component of the flexible arm system is complete. Now I'm just gonna move over and finish the other two smaller components of that arm system. Then we can drill a couple of holes and start to bring this whole thing together. Let's do that. All right, cool. So we now have all four components of the arm mount system completed. I think we're ready to do a dry assembly of everything. So this is gonna come together in the same way that the roof mounts came together. We're gonna use carriage bolts, washers, which is going to protect the wood. And we're gonna use the star knobs, which is going to allow us to tighten these things whenever we want to move it and articulate it about the shop. So let's give it a go.
Okay, that is all assembled. The last thing I'm gonna do is twist the all thread into the base of the dolly. We're gonna get this up there, and see how it works. Okay, so I have it mounted up to the dolly. It seems to work good. The dolly moves, the arm spins and flexes. What I'm noticing though is there's just a little bit too much give with the all thread into the dolly. So what I'm gonna do is probably weld all of the rebar and the nuts together to a couple of plates of steel to help prevent that flex from happening just for the dolly. And then the arm itself can still pivot around the all thread. It's just gonna make that whole setup at the top a lot more secure. I'm gonna start by welding everything together for the dolly and the rebar and the steel plates. And then if that doesn't work enough, then we can look at moving those wheels up. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I've got this thing mounted up on my outfeed table. Before I do any welding, I think what I wanna do is also just remove the side pieces of the dolly. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to weld. So let's go ahead and do that. This all thread is also coated with zinc. You're not technically supposed to weld to that because it puts off some dangerous fumes. So what I've done is position this exactly where I wanna weld it. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie and just mark out those areas, untwist it, and then just use the angle grinder to grind it down a little bit, just to try to get rid of some of that zinc coating. Then we can go ahead and weld this thing up. All right, so that is a lot more solid. So there is a steel plate that is welded on both sides of the dolly so that there can be no flex. And then I added about five screws on each side. So it's, it's really secured into that dolly. The last thing that I'm noticing is that when this thing is at full extension and it's all the way out to the wall is it's just a lot of weight. And what it's doing is just bending the beam slightly with it, which is just, it feels a little bit unstable. So what I'm realizing is I need to add some counterweights to the other side. And I think I'm just gonna do that with a couple of five pound weighted plates. This thing isn't super heavy, but it just needs something to balance it out so that there's not so much twist in the beam. And that as I move the camera around, it doesn't feel like it's eventually just gonna snap the beam from the roof, which would be terrible. So that's the last thing I'm gonna do for this. Then I'm just gonna cut the rebar to length because it's way too long right now. And this thing is pretty much gonna be done and we can add the camera mount to it and get some test shots in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, fast forwarding a few days. What I did was take some of the scrap plywood I had from the build, and I just worked up this extension to the mount that mounts to the all thread, and I added 20 pounds of weight to the end of it just to help balance things out, and it seems to work really well. It slides perfectly with the arm extended all the way out perpendicular. There's no bending of the beam anymore. It feels really secure. This is obviously really ugly. It's just a quick prototype. So what I'm gonna do is just take the remainder of the scrap wood that I have, something that looks a lot nicer, something that can hold weighted plates back here that are nice and secure so that when this thing is swinging around, they don't fly off. All right, so what you are looking at is the first shot with the camera mounted to the extendable arm. So I think everything is 99% done on this thing. 
I was able to wrap up the counterweight system and I have 25 pounds on there right now and it seems to have this thing balanced really nicely. What you also saw me do was add a system at the end of the crane that I originally wasn't going to have that's going to allow me to always keep the camera right side up even though I think my camera can record upside down and then translate that to being right side up automatically. This just seemed more practical to be able to whenever I spin the camera a certain way whether I bring the crane under from the arm or I pull it back out and turn it facing outwards, the camera can always rotate to be right side up. What you also saw me do was mount a ball mounted system to the end of it. This is the same ball mount that my current tripod has. So if for whatever reason I wanna go work outside under the sunlight or I just have a complicated shot that I really can't get with this system, even though it seems to reach every part of my shop, I can quickly just detach the camera from it and move it to my tripod without really having any disruption to my workflow. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this entire build series. It's complete for now. Everything is mounted and properly weighted. The camera is actually mounted to the end of the arm right now filming this outro. I've already moved it all about the shop and done some quick test shots vertically over the table saw, which is really cool. I can get really good working shots of me with my hands right here of it facing down. It reaches all the way over to the drill press, no problem. You can get up close to the miter saw. The possibilities of this thing are really kind of limitless and I'm excited just to figure out all of the new ways that I can continue to use it in my shop moving forward. Now, if you didn't check out parts one and two of the build series, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them linked right here and right here. That way you could see how we got to this final result. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would do that as well. That way you can see all of my future projects and this thing in action moving forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time on Workshop Edits.